Now, the next thing we want to know about with um, archive value queries is, I'm going to just scroll over here to the right, what exactly is it returning? So let's, let's take a look at this, this data right here. I have a graph of some raw archive values that's made it into the Pi system. So these are the points that are actually recorded in the Pi archive. And if we interpolate between these points, we can see what the process was doing at any particular time. And if you have your compression and exception settings set properly, then we know that the process was in this, this area at the time, at whenever it was between these two recorded points. So we can trust that any interpolated point right here is the value, is representative of what was going on in our process at that time. If you want more information on this, I encourage you to look up the exception and compression videos that we have. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit here. Let's say I make a call for this time, which we'll say is like about 9 o'clock. So about 9 a.m., that's, that's where the process is. What is going to be returned by my, um, by my archive value query? And that has to do with what retrieval mode I choose. So to give you a point, so we're using a tag name now, a tag name CDT158 to illustrate this. And I'll write in archive value. And now I'm going to say, what were you asking for, 9 a.m.? So I'll say 9 a.m. It's my timestamp. Timestamp 9 a.m. And the first value here. Now I'm going to ask for this tag name at this timestamp. So I'm asking for this tag that I'm showing here. I'm asking for that tag at 9 a.m. And as we saw, there's no exact value at 9 a.m. I'm asking for a value that's not exact, that's not precisely, there's not a point exactly at that spot in the Pi data archive. And so let's see what happens. And if I say time at left and hit apply, I'll see this. This is what happens when the retrieval mode is set to auto. Now, if I copy this down, let's say what happens if I use a different one. So there's a couple different options underneath here. There's one that's previous, and then there's one that's next. Now what these do, let me just let me just show you what they do, and then I'll explain what's going on. So this is previous, and then there's another one. I'll just get a little bit more space here. Yeah, there's another one which is next. next. Right. So what we've asked for here is we're asking for, I want to know what the timestamp was at 9 a.m. Now when I do auto, it's interpolating between this point and this point to return this one right there. Boop, right there. That's what's being returned right here by auto. When I ask for previous, I'm forcing the archive value query to return me the last previous raw value. So I'm asking for 9 a.m. and the previous raw value is right here. So it's returning me 166, which is that value right here, right there. And as you can imagine, next, next is asking, okay, at 9 a.m., if there's no raw archive value, find the next raw archive value in time and return that to me. So next, it's looking at 9 a.m., the next archive value is right there, which we see is 163. So that's less than the previous value. You can see that this one's less than that. So that's what next is returning. It's returning the next raw archive value. Now there's a few other options on here, and I'm going to refer you more to the manual for them, but I can tell you quickly that auto, so what auto will do, auto will interpolate between points unless you have a special setting for your tag setup, which is step. So step is for tags that, you know, have a step change all the time. And in that case, what auto does is it will always return, if you query this point right here, it will return the previous point. It will always return the previous point, rather than interpolating between these and returning that, which is, which is a little inappropriate for a step function.